This is question 11, paper 2 from the SQA specimen paper for National 5 Mathematics. We've got a piece of paper from which a sector has been removed and this is folded up to form a cone. In the first part we're asked to find the area of this piece of paper that's been removed from the circle, this sector. And you'll notice that it goes with this 110 degree angle at the centre. Um, one of the things we can look at is the whole... Think of the whole circle as involving an angle of 360 degrees at the centre. That's our basis for starting to develop a method for this question. That if we have 360 degrees, we've got the whole circle, which we know is what, pi r squared. So if we had a tiny wee sliver of a sector, looked like a, a, a pine cone needle with one degree, then this would be a 360th of the whole circle. So we'd have the whole circle divided by 360 for this. The actual angle is 110, so the, the actual sector that we're removing uh, goes with an angle of 110. That's 110 of these little tiny slivers that have this area. So 110 times whatever we find the area of that little pine cone needle was. So there we go. That's the method that we'll use. Um, so let's just write this out. 360 degrees goes with pi times r squared. Now, the radius of this circle is 40. So whatever pi times 40 squared is, that's the area of the whole circle which goes with an angle of 360 at the centre. So if it was a, a little pine cone needle sliver that came out of here, one degree that would be a 360th of this number. We'll do all the calculation at the end. There's no point in doing it as we go along. So whatever we get for pi times 40 squared, we'll divide it by 360. And then 110 of these will be there for the angle of the sector that we're after. That's 110 times whatever we get for this calculation. So times 110. And remember, if we multiply, it's 110 over 1, so that appears in the top of the fraction. So it's pi times 40 squared times 110, we divide by 360. So we need our calculator in for this one. So let's clear everything. And pi times 40 squared times 110 and let's then divide by the 360. And there we go, there's our answer. 1535.8 and so on. It just remains to write down an approximation to this number because you can't certainly can't use all of these decimal places. So we'd say the area removed is equal to let's take it to the nearest whole number. So that one five three chopping a point eight eight off it would be nearer to one five one five three six square centimeters. And we'll say what we've done to the nearest one square centimeter. So that's part A. 
Let's look at part B. This remaining piece, the shaded piece here, is then folded to give you this cone. So the two lines O to B and this line here and O to A have to be put together. And this central point O pops up off the... There's a, a flat plane and this is sitting on it. This point pops up, but somewhere along this line there'll be the... Along this cone there'll be the point O at the top and A meeting B. That's A which meets B. They're folded together. Now this circular distance, this circumference of this circle will correspond to this part of the circumference of the original circle. So we've got a large arc, what's called a major arc, of an original that original circle. Now it's the same sort of thinking that goes on with this, that where you have a complete circumference that goes with 360 degrees at the centre. Let me just write this down. 360 degrees this time goes with the whole circumference. And we know the circumference is pi times the diameter. Diameter would be 80 in this case. And then the usual one degree would go with this whole circumference divided by 360. And then the one we're after, 110 degrees is at the centre. This arc, this major arc of the circle corresponds uh, not to 110 in this case. It corresponds to the rest of the 360 degree angle. So it would correspond to 360 uh, minus 110 degrees, which is equal to 250 degrees. Let me write this down here. That angle there, 250 degrees. So don't use 110. That would give you this remaining minor arc on the circle. The 250 degrees corresponds with this major arc that we're trying to work out. So in this case, not, two not 110, but 250. So it will be 250 times whatever we get from the whole circumference divided by 360. So multiply by 250. So that's the setup. Let's get going with that. So the whole angle at the centre, 360 degrees, corresponds to the whole circumference, which is pi times the diameter, which is double that radius. So pi times 80. So whatever that whole circumference comes to, let's try and get one degree, it's a very, very small piece of the circumference that corresponds with one degree at the middle. That would be a 360th of whatever pi times 180 is. So we've got that divided by 360. The angle that we require is 250 degrees. We want to know what the major um, arc that corresponds to 250 degrees is. So it's 250 times whatever this tiny wee arc of the circumference was. So whatever we got for pi times 80 over 360, we're going to multiply that by 250. And again, that's appearing on the, the top of the, the fraction there. So there's the calculation that we've now to do. Let's get going doing that. So it's pi times 80 times 250. And all of that gets divided by 360. And it's 174.53 and so on. 
So the circumference of this major arc, which becomes the circumference of the base of the cone, circumference of base is equal to, and let's again just take it to the nearest, this will be centimetres, I'll take it to the nearest whole centimetre, to the nearest centimetre. 